Bienvenidos a Cuba. ¿Cómo están? Welcome to Cuba. So we're gonna start just only from traveling from Fort Lauderdale to Veradero to Havana. So the first question is, is the visa. Uh, how was the visa process? 
It was pretty easy. Um, of course, you can't go as a tourist, but they had a list. Once you were in Fort Lauderdale, and you went after you got your visa, mm -hmm. you go to the counter to check in, and they have like a list of um, visas mm -hmm. on the counter. And you pick one. They ask, they they're checking you in. They don't say anything to you. And by the time they say something to you, they ask you why are you visiting. You say why you're visiting. They write it down, and that was it. So it maybe takes about five minutes or less. So fifty dollars. Fifty dollars for Southwest. For, visa. for Southwest. For Southwest. Yeah. Okay. And then checking was easy. You just they right. put out a piece of paper and tell you to choose right. which twelve categories. And yeah. it's already sitting on the counter, so it's just kind of look through it before they, while they're, you know, messing with your paperwork and then that way you can answer the question. Yeah. Okay, so from there we landed in Veradero, went through Immigration and Customs, which wasn't, outside of waiting through Immigration, it wasn't that bad. Right. Got the bag. We got a little nervous though because we saw the people in the line over, over. they got pulled off the line. And, and security came and got them. Yeah. And they went back in her room. Then later she came but back. But we saw them later after through. we went through customs. We saw them by baggage. It's beautiful though. It should not be nervous. Mm -hmm. With that beautiful smile. Let's just say to the, you know, the immigration that uh, we're here to have come. <laughs> <laughs> and mind you, that is not on the 12 list of things that you're uh, supposed to be there for. <laughs> okay. And then after that. Air, uh, we checked into Airbnb with uh, Casa Yoni. Yoni, he was he so was sweet. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, we loved him, and we would recommend his his place. Yeah, we got um, a link below at the uh, later time. Sweet. Yeah. Okay, and then after that, how about food? Ooh. And the food. So let's talk about quality and also price wise. So down the street from Yoni's place, like literally no, right across the street. Yeah, yeah. three steps up. <laughs> is a little restaurant that stays open 24 7 or maybe yeah, 20, 20 yeah it was 20 but at late night the menu is very limited yeah Pizza. but during the day you could get this really good chicken and rice it's delicious and they have hot sauce <laughs> so unlike other places here and it only costs what it was 350 yeah the chicken, the chicken plate was 350 yeah. coupe mm -hmm. and that uh, beer was a dollar one coupe i'm sorry one coupe so which is equivalent to about one dollar. Yeah, one dollar. One, one USD. Yes. Right question. So for people such as us who like spice, what would you re recommend for oh, them to bring from the states? You need to bring, bring your, your hot own sauce. hot sauce. <laughs> Please bring your own hot sauce. And okay. pepper, because every place has yeah. salt, but they don't have right. pepper. 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 Okay, let's talk about weather. How was the weather? So as uh, we landed well, on the 29th of December, how was the weather? Beautiful. Perfect. No humidity for an island, there's no humidity. No humidity, just a bit windy. Our beach days were kind of limited because it was so windy. windy. That Friday, was it Friday or Saturday? Friday. 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 Yeah, the weather wasn't Thursday that was kind of breezy too though. After a while, yeah, around 5 o'clock it yeah. dropped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the temperature dropped and it got the wind picked up. The water felt good. Just bring your towel. Beautiful because it got chilly once we got out of the water. Okay, and speaking of that, since you brought that up, so for personal hygiene wise, for public restrooms, mm -hmm. you would definitely need... Tissue. Tissue. <laughs> Tissue. Make sure you have your own toilet paper. And, and hand, hand sanitizer. sanitizer. Mm -hmm. So we stayed in Boca, which is about 10 miles outside of Veradero. The pros and cons, so staying in Boca, basically you get more of the local feel. Yes. Versus Veradero, which is very touristy. So Boca, like, yeah, Boca was very, um, but you still had like the street vendors. It was more, you know, getting a feel for, for the, the local, the, the Cuban you know, culture. Yeah, the Cuban culture. Where when you go to Veradero, it's more. You have the strip, and you have more of the tourists. You run into more tourists. Um, more within, shops. Yeah. Shop, yeah, shopping areas, and the prices go up a little bit more yeah. for yeah. the food. And um, remember the taxi ride to Boca was what? We paid how much? 25? So from the airport, originally when we landed, they tried to charge us 36, but we ended up No, it was 30. more. I think they even tried to charge now you said 36, 30. and I said 30, but 30 is way too high because it was only like a 10 minute ride. Right. So. Yeah. So the only drawback about staying in Boca, Boca to get the more local Cuban feel is that you have to commute back and forth to Veradero. And then you gotta worry about bargaining with the taxis on the price. 
because as they see Westerners, they're gonna all automatically try to charge you 20 mm -hmm. coup, mm -hmm. which it should be, but average, you should pay no more than, I would say, around right. 12 to 15 max. Yeah. But this is especially end of the year, so they might be charging a higher price, so mm -hmm. it could be lower uh, at a different time of the year. We're just really glad we didn't stay in Veradero mm -hmm. and stayed in Boca. If you want the true Cuban feel, I would say stay Cuban in Boca. Scary. Right. And then also the one thing in current. And it was like what five ten minutes away. Yeah, about ten minute taxi ride. Yeah, tops. Ten minutes, yeah. Everything yeah. was just so cheap. Twenty five cent ice cream that was really good. Coffee espresso for twenty five cents. And um, okay, so okay, how would you say uh, the interaction was with the locals? They were very friendly. Yes, I would agree. Um, they were all helpful. They, a lot of them did not speak English. Make sure you have Google Translate on your phone. <laughs> it's central. And make sure not only do you have it, but get the download package. Yes, download package yeah. So you can use it offline. Right. Right. So yeah. download it before you get to Cuba. Yes. Because if not, you won't be able to use it. Like me. And speaking <laughs> of that, so if you tr would you be would you say it's fair to say that if you truly want to unplug and get away from the rest of the world, come to Cuba because you yes. will not, yeah. I reiterate, will not have any access to the internet. No Nothing. access. And you don't on. see people walking down the street with their head, head down and the phone in their hand. Like people, you, there's a, so much interaction. You know, even though you, you, we came here not speaking a lot of Spanish and the people don't speak that much English, there was still interaction. We tried. Only time we pulled out our phone was to, you know, translate. try to translate yeah. with the Google Translate. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was refreshing and, and it was great. And everyone is helpful as far as because they don't know, they know we don't know how to speak Spanish, so they'll even pull their phones out and they, pull up yeah. their translating app yeah. to communicate with us, you know, and ask us questions. So it's, it's been pretty, pretty easy. On the Veradero Beach, there's this restaurant Oh yeah. With some baked pork ribs and some rice that was we, delicious. Uh, we, we don't even know where is that. Yeah, <laughs> we can't see. But, oh, it's right across from the shopping. All of yeah, the local yeah, shopping. Yeah, local shop. If you were to walk straight. The souvenir shopping. Souvenir shop. So you would come out, cross the street towards the beach. But you can't and I even tell see you it. what, you can't see it from off the street. You yeah. have to just keep walking to the beach. If you bring your hot sauce, <laughs> that meal will change your life. And we didn't have hot sauce and it was life changing still, <laughs> the, the ribs and the rice. But if you bring your hot sauce, that's it. You and the never price, the, what was the price? $2.50 for that plate. Oh, $2.50 kook for the plate. Yeah, because we forgot to speak about currency. So what, before, prior to coming to Cuba, how did you do the currency? We changed our U.S. dollars to euros. One thing I forgot to mention also, remember that there's two currencies in Cuba. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's the Cuban peso and the Cuban coupe. Coup. So sometimes, keep in mind that if you give a coupe, sometimes they might give you change back in pesos. Depending on yeah. where you're at. Depending yeah. on where you're at, yes. So more of the smaller local places might give you pesos back. And changed my euros to um, Kook 540 euros and got back 539. Yeah, so basically. And Kook, so it's basically one for one. And as of now, if you do bring USD, you get taxed at 10%. So you don't want to bring USD. So that's the reason to convert to euros prior to arriving in Cuba. Yeah. Which is a coconut ice cream made with coconut water. Uh -huh. They put some chocolate, they take the cocoa and the coconut water, and they mix it in the mixer machines and they put it inside the freezer and they put uh, milk. Okay. That's how they do it. Nice. And then you got a Cuban one. I'm not big on Cuba. wanted to go to Trinidad. Oh. This is what? American. You like a little. I want to say. How's your Picture of that. That's pretty good. That's right. That's you have a dollar. Good chicken. That's chicken you had here, huh? Probably the best chicken. It's like Chinese food chicken. Huh? It's like Chinese food chicken. Like crunchy.